Hello. Today we're going to take a look at some Windows keyboard shortcuts, selecting actions, and just navigating and making things in folders. So I've got this little playground here, an empty folder where we'll do things. Let's start by making a text file. Right click, new text document. We'll call it uh, play. It was highlighted blue there, so I just had to type in. Let's open that up and I'll just paste this stuff in here that I've got. All right, let's save that. Okay, so first bit is this copy, control C. So I highlight something, control C, and I will click over here and I will do control V to paste it. Paste, 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 paste. No problem. If you want to cut and move things, I will select this. I will do control X. It'll disappear. And now I want it down here. Some space, control V to paste what I have in the clipboard. And it's down here now. So that's kind of a move versus a copy. And, uh, oh, I've got that one written twice. Undo redo. If I press control Z, it will, it should undo that paste command, or I guess, no, I've removed the line last. So there's paste back, control Z over and over again. This is just doing one thing back and forth. This program doesn't support more than one undo. So control Z and control Y. Oh, this does not support control Y. We'll look at that after. Selecting control A is to select all. So if I drag my mouse around as I'm holding the, mouse down, I can select things. If I want to grab everything, rather than going to the very top and pulling your mouse down all the way to the bottom, you know, that could that could be an issue if your list is big. Instead, I will, you know, having clicked anywhere in the file makes no difference. Control A allows me to basically select everything in one shot. And let's say I cut it, Control X, it'll disappear and control V, I paste it back in. So yeah, control A is a great way to just quickly select everything. Next is we have the control shift versus shift control. So if I, I think this might be better to do on a list, but if I hold control, no, it doesn't really, okay, the control select is something I'll show you when we do the files and folders but shift mouse click. So if I put my cursor here after the T and I just put the carrot right between the T and the R and then I hold shift and then I click left click over here at the end, it will, because I'm holding shift, it'll highlight everything in between where I started and then where I, I clicked to finish. You'll see that happen better with files and folders. And um, we'll go through these window, Windows keyboard shortcuts after. So let's redo all of these, but with files instead of words on a text file, because these are universal. These selecting actions are universal. For the most part, they'll work basically anywhere in a computer um, in, in a way that you would expect. So let's take files, for, for instance. Um, let's make a folder here. So right click, new folder, I'll call it bin one. All right. Here, we'll just make a file in here. We'll call it, uh, this will be a text file. We'll just call it bin one. And maybe we'll open that up with a double click and just type in uh, something. Control S, we'll save it. That little star disappeared. Watch this. I type in more and you see a little star right beside the word bin up top. That, that little asterisk means that this file hasn't been saved since you've added something. So if I go file, save, you'll see the star disappears. It's been saved. Let's add something else. Oh, it's new again. It has a star. Control S, the other way to save it. It's done. Or I can add more and I can just press the X button. And because it hasn't been saved and has this star, Windows will ask me, do you want to save this? And I'll say, sure. And let's save that. Okay, let's bring in some test files here. There we go, we got some PDFs. We'll bring in another folder here. Call it one. 
So you, yeah, that's good. All right, so let's go back to our shortcuts here. And we'll take a look at uh, these copy, paste, cut, move, undo, the selecting actions, but this time with files. So if I click the three and I go Control C, now I click away from it and I go Control V, I have now copied and pasted number three. Windows has automatically added copy to the end of it because you can't have the same file with the same name next to it. So it, it, it adds a little something there. If I keep on pressing Control V over and over again, it'll keep on pasting copies of number three because that's the last thing I Control C'd. Doing the same thing without the keyboard shortcuts, you're right clicking, you're choosing copy, or in the case of Windows 11, there's gonna be hieroglyphs at the top that represent copy, paste, and rename and things like that. So I click copy, and then I could click not on a file, but beside a file, and paste, and there's another copy, and paste, and there's another copy, and it's the same thing, but with the keyboard shortcut, Control-V, Control-V, much quicker. All right, that's Control-C, Control-V. Uh, let Likewise, I decide, oh, you know what? These files shouldn't be here. They should be in this number one folder. So I will drag and move them. Or maybe I don't want to do that. Let's just cancel that. Maybe I want to, here, let's grab those again with the drag and pull. I will control X. Or before I do that, of course, you can right click and cut it. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut. So let's go control X. They've all gone slightly gray, just as a visual indication that they are pending the final command. Once you cut something, it's not finished until you paste it, which completes the full action, which I've gone ahead and called it a move in the notes because it's the same thing as a move versus a copy. So now that I've got that gray because I've control x it, I'll go into one and I'll just control V to paste. There they are. And if I go back to the previous folder above, you'll see that they're gone now because they've been moved into number one right here. Let's go back again. I can press control Z to undo that because I turns out I don't want to move them there. Control Z and they'll come back here and they're no longer there. It basically undoes that action. Let's let's um, cut, copy, paste. Um, of course, uh, cut and paste is a move command, so I could just select them and click, left, hold, drag, and then you see it says move, and I just simply release the mouse, and they've moved. And that's essentially the same thing as a cut and paste. Oops, I went too far back. Let's control Z that and bring them back over here. Control Z is your undo. There's also redo. If the program only does one undo and then you press undo again, it just redoes what you've done. Like you saw in Notepad, it was simply removing something and then putting it back, back and forth because it only went back one. But some programs you can undo 50 times, let's say. So you can type an essay and control Z, Z undo word, letter by letter, word by word, the entire essay, or control Y to re regurgitate what you did. So if I press control Y now, I believe those files, the last thing I undid was moving them, so they should go back into number one, control Y. There we go. It redid my command of moving those files. So they're back here again. So yeah, controls E, control Y, edit, undo, and redo are great keyboard shortcuts. I don't know if there's a right click for that. If I right click here, oh yeah, it actually does. See, it says control Z, and you see now, it doesn't just say undo, it gives you an idea of what it is it's gonna undo. So in this case, it, it says move. So I'll, if I click that, I bring those files back here. If I right click and go, oh, there's redo, control Y. I can redo the move or undo the previous thing I did before I moved them. So in this case, Windows Explorer, which is this program that lets me see files and folders in my computer, it does support multiple undos. So if I keep on 
pressing control Z to undo things. In this case, the next thing on the list will be copy control Z. Oh, one of my files just disappeared because I copied it. If I hit control Z again, another one, because I was, remember I was copying files. So I'm undoing the copying of those files. And of course I can redo the copy. So now let's press control Y over and over again, control holding it Y and just pressing Y. I'll just keep control held down and I'll press Y over and over again and I'll bring back everything I did. Eventually I'll finish copying and then I will move those files. So I'll control Y again. Oh, there's another one control Y and there's the move command now. So it's working its way back up everything I did like a trail of events. The final thing I did was move those. I'm at the last thing I've done. So if I press control Y again, there's nothing. And my computer just makes a loud noise. You probably didn't hear that. And you see that there is no redo because I'm at the end of what I've done. Yeah, control Z, control Y. Excellent. If you make a quick mistake, I find often the quick mistake will be the old cough and drag where you, you cough and your muscle spasms and you click and drag a file into another file. Oops, there's already a one in there. So that didn't work quite so well here. Let's, uh, let's make a copy of that. Okay, let's try that again. I click and drag accidentally and drop it in there. Happened so fast. I might not have even noticed what I did. So how am I going to undo what I don't even know what I did? I'm just going to press control Z. Ah, the file has come back. That's it went in there. I don't even know where it went. All I care about is that I've undone that accident. So control Z is a great way to get yourself out of a mess. If you notice it right away, of course, if you don't notice you've done that, you're going to go ahead and do a bunch of other things. And the history of what you've done is going to go further and further behind. And that's just going to become a problem eventually because one day you'll notice that your file was moved and you don't know where it went, but anyhow. So let's move on to select all control a much like in a file with words where I can press control and then a and select all the words. I can do the same thing over here with files. I can click a file to select it. I can click and drag. When I click and drag, I have to start off of a file. If I start on a file and click and drag, it will just move the file. I'm not dragging anymore. I'm just moving a file. So of course you got to always start somewhere in the white outside of the files and I'm selecting things. Or let's just do control A and it selects all the files for me. If I've got a ton of files in a folder, I'm just going to control C, control V that a bunch of times to make a big mess. And you see this list of files gets really long, right? Rather than, you know, clicking here and dragging and pulling it down and letting windows scroll to try and get everything. I will, you know, let's say I wanted to move all these files into number one, I would do that. And then I would click and drag to move them. And I'm just going to escape that. That is a bit time consuming. So instead, what I'll do to move everything into number one is I'll do control a select everything. And of course, I don't want to move one into itself because that doesn't make sense. So I will unselect number one, which is the control mouse click. This is to select and deselect individual files. So let's hold control and then left click on number one, and that will deselect it. If I continue holding control and click it again, I'll reselect it. Let's do the same thing with other files. While we're holding control, I'll click one. I'll click this PDF. I'll click that PDF. And you see how I'm unselecting individual files with the control key. Likewise, I'll hold control again, and I will click them again to reselect them. Now, in this case, I was going to move everything into number one. So let's control and click number one. Now I have everything grabbed except that folder. Now I'm ready to drag it in and move everything. I'll just say uh, replace these files. We've got some files with the same name in there. It's no big deal. There we go. I've moved everything in there without having to do some drag and select. Let's control Z and bring those back over here. There we go. Let's do a shift select. 
on these files. So another way to, let's say, conveniently select everything, I will click accept number one, the folder. So let's say that I click number one here to select it. I scroll to the bottom without holding anything. I've, I've merely just clicked on the top file. I'll scroll to the bottom. And now before I click on the final file, I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard, click. And now it has selected everything in between the beginning and the end. That's how shift click works. It's select from to. So on words, if I put my caret up here at the word give, and then I hold shift and click down here into windows, it will select everything between give and windows without selecting everything before it and after it. Same thing over here. So let's shift click from the top down to the bottom. And let's say I don't want to select the non copy files. So I will hold control. I'll click three. I'll click two. I'll let go of control and scroll up. I'll hold control again, click one. There we go. I've selected everything with shift select, but then I used control click to deselect very specific files. Now I'm ready to, I don't know, let's say we wanted to cut this or copy it. Let's cut it. I'll do a right click cut instead of control X. Cut, they go gray. I go into one and right click paste. Or let's do control V paste. There we go. All my files appear. I go back up here to one folder above and they're not here anymore. But these three that I deselected are still there. So that's the control shift uh, mouse clicks. Finally, let's finish with Windows key shortcuts. The window key is on your keyboard between the control and the alt and generally has a picture of a little window like the Microsoft logo. So when I hold that Windows logo button down, that's what I mean when I say win, it doesn't actually say W-I-N on it, it has a picture of a window. So just remember that um, on most keyboards. So I'm gonna hold the window key and I'll press E. That will open another Explorer window to explore my computer. Let's close that and do it again, window E. I can keep on holding window key down and pressing E over and over again and I'll open multiple Windows Explorers. I use this keyboard shortcut all the time to uh, open a new window. I always generally work with more than one Windows Explorer window at a time. I'll have one over on one side, I'll have another on another side. That way I can do two things at once. I can shrink them a little bit to see them better. That way I can, let's say, work on this play file up a level. If I go up a level on this window, Let's press up. I'm looking at the same spot. If I move this file here into bin, you'll see that happen on the left because I'm looking at the same folder, but on two different windows. So that's convenient way to work in, rather than forcing yourself to accomplish everything in one window where you're going backwards and forwards continuously, you know, you're gonna have to use the control C, go up a layer, control V. I find it's a lot easier to have two windows side by side, so you can kind of double task and have these looking at different spots. So I can go all the way into one on this one and I can drag a file out from that and bring it back up to the top, two, two folders higher. So that's very convenient. But yeah, that's the Windows E to open up Explorer. Windows L is the only other useful one I think that you should know about and that locks your computer very quickly. The long way to do that is under the user kind of where you shut down your computer, you can lock it there. But that's a lot of work, a lot of clicking. So I just instead hold L, hold window key and press L and it, yeah, the lock computer essentially ended the video recording. Uh, so that was interrupted, but yeah, it locks your computer. It's great, right? Ray, before you step away from computer, window L locks it that way your colleagues or somebody in the room, you know, can't tamper with your stuff while you've gone and get coffee or something. Um, these are the very most important keyboard shortcuts that turn you from a slow sloth on the computer into a seasoned vet because you're not fumbling around with the Windows right click menu, uh, which is, you know, it's just slow. You know, you're not going 
Oh, this doesn't have much of a right click menu. I'll be honest too, a lot of programs, they support copy, paste, undo, redo, select all, and yet in said program, whatever program that might be, you'll never actually see those controls on their user interface. Like there won't be a, a right click copy or paste or select all. Even though the program allows you to do these things, the guy who made the program didn't put the buttons in there. But you bet these keyboard shortcuts will still work. And so there is a case where you can only do them with the keyboard shortcuts. So they're very handy. I would say the most common ones, of course, are Control-C, Control-V, and Control-Z. That ends this video.